right. David is a personal trainer slash coach at Fitness for 10 in Carson City, and that's where he is now. He's in our studio there at Fitness for 10 in Carson City. Thanks for being with us, David. Thank you, Steve. We're going to talk about cardio. I mean, not cardio, carbs. We're going to talk about carbohydrates. We already talked about cardio. So, um, carbohydrates, it just such so many opinions about this also. You know, be low carb, no, you need carbs. There's so many different opinions. And what I'm going to say right out of the gate here is that everyone's different. Not only is everyone different, I'm different. If the way I eat now, if I ate like that when I was in my early 20s, I probably would have passed out. Because I, it felt like I'd get lightheaded if I didn't have enough carbs when I was 21, 22 years old, you know, training hard. But everyone's different, and I do have a carbohydrate rule, a general rule that I give to people on where to figure out or where to start um, if you're just going to wing it. And, and so it, it's a combination of body fat and age. So I'll get to that in a second. But your body does change. Not only is everyone different, everyone changes sometimes year by year as you age and mm -hmm. your nutrients that you need are probably going to change also. So I know you have a lot of clients of all different ages um, and your, your competitor, your physique competitor. So carbs are something that you watch like a hawk, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah especially getting closer to a show. So how do you monitor and manage your carbohydrates? Give us an idea on how you manage them when you're maybe in the off season and when maybe when you're getting closer to the show, how do you manage your carbohydrates for you personally? Yeah, for me personally, um, and like you said, everybody kind of, everybody's going to be different for me. I uh, like right now, for instance, I'm just, barely starting the kind of contest prep season. You're still 14 and a half weeks away at this point of recording. Um, so for me, you know, there, there is no uh, cutting down right now of carbs because, you know, as we talked about in other videos, you know, carbs give you that energy. And, and what I speak to my clients in nutrition, when I go over nutrition with them as a coach, you know, carbs are really, really important. There's a lot of myths out there about, like you said, no carb, low carb, high carb, all these different things. So people get really confused for me um, on an off season, which technically right now would still be kind of where I'm at, you know, though definitely uh, kind of getting honed in on, on some more specific uh, nutrition uh, plans and stuff right now. But um, for me, you know, a, a moderate carb diet is generally where I stay most of the time. Um, and what I mean by moderate, um, you'll hear people use different things, uh, proteins and carbs and how much you should have and all that kind of stuff. For me, it's, um, I'm not going to go and eat a whole bunch of, and I'm going to make this point pretty early on here, cookies, bad carbs, all these processed food type carbs. We're talking, you know, rice, sweet potatoes, different things that are, are natural foods, whole foods. And so for me right now is white rice, sweet potatoes, um, those types of things. And so I have a really good idea on how to gauge that. Of course, I also have a scale at home, so that helps out too, a food scale. Um, as I'm getting into further and more serious show prep, which is coming up here. And as we get closer to the show, it gets more and more tight in terms of carbs. You know, they never go away. We don't ever get rid of them. Um, especially for me and, and my physique as, you know, a competitor, I'm going to need to kind of keep that, that size and that muscle and that energy up as much as possible until probably about four days before the show, um, where we kind of, uh, well, actually, I think it's maybe, yeah, I think it's four days. Uh, we deplete completely the carbs out. We want to just get everything gone. And the reason for that, you know, trick for everybody out there is, you know, you load the carbs up right before the show, you know, day two and day before that kind of thing. So then when you go out on the stage, you know, you're, you're much bigger because your body is really withdrawing those carbs out and then you're just hitting them back in. And so your body reacts, you get, you know, bigger muscles, things like that. So, Right now, though, we're on a much more steady path um, in terms of just continuing the carbohydrates, proteins, etc., cetera, uh, on, a, on a relatively steady basis for the next you know, couple of weeks. What you mentioned, I'll also say, works for 
distance runners. I, cause I go, <laughs> wow, I have all this energy, this crazy energy when I deplete and then carb load, because what happens is the, the muscle cell gets depleted and then boom, it overcompensates. So you have extra energy in those cells. I've tried that with some marathon runners and they shattered their, their PRs personal record by doing this before they ran it's and I thought it would work and it did. Um, but, um, in general, you know, and, and a lot of bodybuilders and competitors, they're going to, as they get closer to the show, you know, maybe two weeks out, three weeks out, four weeks out, they cut the fat out. Why do they cut the fat out? Because that's where all the calories are. So the easiest way to cut the calories is to get the fat out. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, with nine, nine calories per gram of fat, I mean, it's, it's going to give you double the, I'll put it in the calorie savings, I guess you, I will call it here, you know, versus cutting out a carb or a protein. Cause those are four, four calories per gram. So yeah, people start cutting out the fat um, in order to you know cut down those calories real quick. Now, I'm certainly not advocating cutting fat out of your diet as a healthy diet and, and as a weight loss program because what you're doing is you're a competitor and this stuff is going to vary depending on how many weeks you're out. But healthy fats are very important for a healthy diet and to maintain healthy weight. Um, mm -hmm. So, but it's just that's what competitors do when they really want to get their calories down. The easiest way to do it is get the thing out that has the most calories and that's the fat even though they don't completely cut it out ever, just like the carbohydrates. So my, and you can tell me what you think about this, David, my, here, here's my car, my carb rule in general, the younger you are and the leaner you are, the more carbs I think you should have in your diet. At least that's where you start. Everyone's going to be different. And a lot of like you have your own coach. I mean, you know what you're doing, but you have a coach, you know, things to, uh, someone to bounce things off of. So every, everyone's got to figure this out for themselves. So this is just a general rule that I have. So the younger you are and the leaner you are, the more carbs you should have in your diet or the more that you're going to start with when you're figuring out how many carbs you should be eating. Now, if you're older, if you're in your sixties, and you're obese, then you need to eat fewer carbs. I've found throughout my life that that rule works the best. So the older and the more fat, the lower your carbs should be. As now again, everyone's not going to be exactly the same, but that's my general rule. So that means if you're older and you're in your sixties and you're really lean, Okay, you're not fat, so you're older and you're lean, and your glucose levels are good, you're probably going to want some more carbs. Now, if you're 19 or 20 and you're obese, the same thing. Yes, you're really young, but you're obese, so you have a lot of body fat on your body. You're going to want to think about cutting your carbs a little bit also um, if you're in that situation. And then there's... You know, the scale goes all the way from one end to the other. So what do you think about that, David? Yeah, you know, I, I agree with that, I, you know, and again, everybody, you know, as we state a lot here, everybody's going to be different, kind of has to find their own, their own way of doing some certain things. But in general, yeah, that would be uh, kind of my idea as well. If we're, if we're overweight, you know, regardless of age, you know, it's something where you then have to look at you know, what are we putting in, what are we putting in the body? And if we're putting in a, an overload of carbs, which generally speaking, that is the case, not always, again, everybody's different, but you know, where do those carbs go? Especially if we're not active, we're not, you know, exuding that energy out somewhere, right? We're not, we're not working out. We're not, you know, doing walking, you know, different things that can, can kind of get that energy expenditure higher. Well, those carbs, are going to be stored in the body, you know, with body fat. So we want to make sure that, you know, the overall calories, of course, would be down, not to a dangerous level. And of course, you know, uh, there are doctors out there, you know, physicians, different things that will tell you um, where they want you to be. And you definitely should follow that. But as a general rule, um, you know, you want to just look at what are you eating? And if you are eating a ton of carbohydrates, 
you are overweight, you know, that's something where, you know, let's start cutting those down. Now, cutting them completely out and doing something like a, a keto diet or something like that is too extreme for a lot of people, not for everyone. Some people love that, that keto lifestyle, and that's great if it works for them and it's sustainable. But really looking at a majority of the population, you have to be very, you know, um, you know, realistic, I guess is the best way to put it, and, and say, okay, where can we start cutting? Okay, we can start cutting these carbohydrates. And what you're going to find most of the time is, you know, you're going to start seeing a change. You're going to start feeling a change because when we have too much carbohydrates as being somebody who's overweight, and I've been there um, in my 20s and, you know, had to kind of work around that. That was in our other video. And 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 that's the majority of what I had was way too many carbs from sweets and everything else. So once you start cutting that and you really don't go back to that type of eating behavior, which I had, so I can definitely speak personally about it, um, you know, you really feel that change. And once your energy goes up from kind of sloughing off some of those carbs and, and processed foods, then you're not really wanting to necessarily go back to that. And you start having a more leveled, uh, you know, uh, nutrition plane, so to speak. Yeah. And, you know, I think we all agree your protein, if you're trying to build your body, if you're trying to improve your physique, if you're trying to get more fit, protein's most important. I mean, that's the first, that's the first macro I try to get dialed in. And then from there you can kind of, you know, decide what, what you want your carbs or your fat to be. But again, everyone is different. And I just gave you a general rule. That rule might not work for you, depending on your body and, and uh, you know, your diet and how your body responds. So, um, David, if people want to follow you on social media, how do they do that? So, Steve, I have two Instagram pages. More than welcome to, and I encourage you to follow both or one or the other. Uh, so, at David Wright underscore fitness, that is my personal fitness page kind of seeing my befores, afters, progress on my fitness journey up till now. Um, and then also at Right Fitness Training. Um, and that's my personal training and nutrition coach page for all of that content. All right. If you guys are anywhere near Carson City and want to go by and say hi to David, that's where he is. So thanks for being with us, David, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you, Steve.